Okay, what we're doing today is going to be an installation of a Road Armor bumper, PIA lights in the bumper, and a 0507 grill in the Road Armor bumper is also 0507 onto an 01 F350. The 0507 bumpers will fit on, the 0507 grills will fit on. Just remember that the in order to upgrade the lights in the to the 0507 style you will have to order a new 0507 header behind that grill to accept them or you'll have to cut your existing header. The 0507 grill there will fit in. The same screws will attach to the top however because the header panel is a, a 9904 header panel the clips at the bottom are not going to fit in and you have to tie wrap them in place and I have a uh, Ford Oval emblem to go in the center there. Road Armor Bumper knows the difference in the size of the pods for the lights. Contrary, make sure that when you speak with the salesman, contrary to what they told me originally um, where I ordered these from 510s are not 4 inch across. Those are 4 inch and 5 inch. So you have to make sure you order. If you're going to put PIAs in there, you order the 540 series for the larger holes and the 510 series for the smaller. You can see I already have one of the 540s sort of tucked in there just a data for size. All right. You're going to need help, you're going to need a hydraulic lift, a fork lift, some strong friends or ingenuity to get this bumper into place. Shipping weight for this bumper is about 250 to 270 pounds and the bumper weighs about 150 170. I cannot pick the bumper up on my own and I'm in fairly good shape. So the first thing we've got to do is get those tow hooks out of the way to put the bumper on. I had upgraded the black painted to the chrome tow hooks. However, those are going to interfere with the mounting of the bumper. And as you can see, the road armors come with their own attaching points for hooks. So first thing we're going to do is get that out of the way, take those off, and then we'll remove the grill, and then we'll go from there. Just a note right now, what you might want to do with all the interferences out of the way, I popped the grill off. It took about oh, three minutes to get that off. Uh, it comes off very easily. Is for the lighting, you're going to have wire runs that are going to go between the batteries, uh, power supply, uh, the dashboard obviously inside, and then down to the bumper. So with things out of the way right now, it's a good time if you want to, to do the initial wiring runs. So you don't have to be reaching and scraping your hands behind the grill and behind the bumper. So just do an initial run of the wiring, get them down, uh, and just tie them out of the way. What you're looking at is called the header. It supports the grill. As you can see, it goes back and behind and provides support for the headlamps as well. This is what you have to change if you're going to do a complete uh, facelift. Uh, including changing out the headlamps as well. You have to change this header out because it will not accept uh, the new headlamps 0507 without modifications. You have to take a Dremel and do cutting around back there as well. So later on I'll pop the new grill out and the headlights, put a new header panel in, new headlamps and put the same grill uh, back in there as well. These screw holes on top you remove those first, take the grill out, and then the grill fits into these clips, these holes on the bottom, and they are very easy. You simply pry up, you take a screwdriver and pry, push the clip up on the bottom, and the grill pops right out. You can... All right, these are the two inch bolts that are supplied by Road Armor, which are designed to hold this front reinforcing place, plate in place and use these rectangular pieces which fit inside like so. And normally what it 
you have is the horn. It's called the horn of the frame. It's a front piece that holds a bumper attached to the frame. These reinforcing brackets go into place in front like that. These pieces fit inside and then you thread from the bottom with a two inch. Now what I found is that because of all the thicknesses of the materials, the height of those nuts, the thickness of this plate, and the thickness of the frame itself, there's not enough thread engagement. Now, as you can see, from up under here, because of the holes, the size, you do need a washer. That's too bit large of a hole for the head of this bolt that they give you. So in doing that, when you put a washer on there, you're now adding an additional thickness that has to be accounted for. So you lose more thread. Now what's important is that you have to have proper thread engagement with any bolt, meaning that enough thread has to come through the back side of a nut, any nut, to ensure that the bolt is indeed holding it in place. Now what I have over here is I use two bolts that I've heard I've put in place. You can see them there. And the difference between these two, you can see they both have washers in place, is that for one of them, this is the boat supplied by Road Armor. And as you can see, there's insufficient thread engagement. The boat should, the threads of the boat should extend above this nut. And it doesn't, because the boats aren't long enough. So what I had to do is I went out and bought two inch, they give you one and a half inch bolts, I bought two inch. As you can see now, the boat clearly extends through the nut and there's proper thread engagement. Now this is longer than it really needs to be. However, there was no one and three quarter inch. It jumps from one and a half to two inch bolts. Same grade eight, same coarse threads. So it's a proper, make sure you do exact uh, rating for when you exchange bolts like that. Don't settle for what they have. These are grade 8 bolts. That's a grade 8 bolt. Coarse thread. Obviously you got to have the same thread or it's not going to engage in the nut properly. But thread engagement is critical. Now these, this plate does not hold the bumper on, you know, per se, because the bumper is actually going to be threaded. The bolts on the bumper go through here and through that horn that's welded to the frame. So this is actually holding in place. This reinforces the metal. So if these would come out, you wouldn't lose your bumper, but certainly the metal would rattle around and you'd lose the integrity of the strength of which these are making up for. So that's a little important thing to know about bolts. They have to extend through the nuts to get the proper thread engagement. Okay? Moving on. Okay. So the brackets are in place on, on the front of the, the truck. Um, the reinforcing parts are there too. So now what we're going to do is, uh, so the, the nut plates is in there too. So these are already on, I've driven them in. I mean, it takes a little bit sometimes to get these threads lined up, but you'll get there. So attached, torqued down. Now over on this side of the bumper, they have these other plates right here. I mean, they, they're confusing in the instructions. They still say, like in these instructions, they'll, they mention tabs that have three nuts welded, and they say triple nut plates. The triple nut plates, in the first, when they're first talking about tabs and triple nut plates, they're the same thing. The triple nut plates are what we put in there into the uh, reinforcing brackets. Then they mention again the two tabs. Well, what they're talking the second time is they're talking about these things. The triple nut brackets go in and hold the reinforcing plate in place. These tabs here they talk about with the nuts welded in place actually fit inside of the road armor bumper. And these are what hold the bumper onto the vehicle. So you just reach back behind and slide them through. And they fit in. Then these are retaining washers. What these do is they keep the nuts, the bolts and these tabs in place. And the best way to attach one of those is just get a, uh, a larger washer. I use a deep, I always get a deep well. 
uh, to help put these things in place. To sort of get them on, get them centered, and push them in place, just like that. They'll be loose, but it keeps them from falling out, so as you pick the bumper up and align these bolts with the holes and the reinforcing plates in the frame, it keeps us from falling back out. So I've done four on the other side, and uh, I'll put these four in place, and then comes the real fun part, which is uh, picking the bumper up and walking it into place. You're going to require help, you're going to require support, and realize do not get up under this bumper without it being supported on top of something. Only bad things can happen if the bumper falls on you. So these now are in place and being held. Uh, I've already, if you note, know, I've already installed my lights. Uh, I've just done a quick rough alignment of them. Uh, once the bumper's in place and uh, nighttime comes, I can align the lights properly. So now these four are in place. And then the next thing we do is we pick the bumper up and slide it in. So this is what done looks like. The bumper's in place. Uh, PIA lights installed in their pods. I have a set of KC's installed up here on the pre-runner bar. The grill's in place. Emblem's attached. And this is what a 9904, in this case an F350, looks like when you do the 0507 facelift on it. Remember that you do have to, if you have any tow hooks, you got to take those off. You have to do a little wiggling to get that in place. And what I found handy was the reinforcing plates, those plates that I showed you the three bolts in, talking about the clearance, thread clearance, loosen those up a little bit and it will allow that reinforcing plate to move slightly which will help with the alignment of the bolts going into the reinforcing plate. So once you get it back in place, tighten them down, torque them down, and then start tightening the bumper. And remember, don't tighten it all on one side. First, before you tighten any of the bumper bolts, uh, make sure the bumper is level. Check for spacing between headlights on each side. Make sure it's even. You will have no side-to-side -side adjustment whatsoever. You only have up and down adjustment and a very slight tilt adjustment as you can do, but it's mainly up and down. So just what I do is just go ahead and drop it down uh, and let it rest on the bottom of the, the plate in there, the, the bolt. And if it's not even, then I have floor jacks under each side. I would just raise the floor jack ever so slightly to make sure it was square. And then I tightened everything down. The instructions that came with the road armor bumper were at best fair, more, more poor. I actually had to call road armor for clarification. Uh, English is poor in it, and even one of the reps there admitted that the instructions are not very good. So be just it's really simple, but just read. They'll use um, the same name, uh, the same two names for the same item. Those um, plates that the three bolts engaged it on each side. Actually, they'll give them two different names. Uh, other than that. Uh, it's just pretty straightforward. Remember to use the correct hardware. I got a whole lot of extra hardware that I did not need with this bumper, probably for installing the winch that goes on the front. I had to modify the license plate to fit back on the bumper because the holes in your in this license plate do not line up with the holes in the back. I believe that's for a winch that uh, goes on there. This is designed to accept the winch. I chose not to put the Road Armor name on there. I think it gives it a cleaner look not having that on top since uh, here in Virginia we've got to have a license plate on the front and that clutters the front of the truck up enough as it is. Later on what I'll do is go back I'm going to pop this grill back out, take the headlights out, remove that header panel I showed you back there, put the 0507 header panel in and do the upgraded through the 0507 headlamps. That's, uh, that's for another day. And there you have it. That is the 0507 upgrade, in this case on an 01 F350 Super Duty.